We're back, and today we're doing a special episode of the Bath Salts Breakdown. And we're doing a reaction video to one of the most famous roles on YouTube. It's between Chewy and Jordan teaches jujitsu. What's up, guys? Today we have Chewy on the show, and I'm gonna break down nice to our see role. On the channel. I asked you guys what just a YouTuber often. you'd like to see me collaborate with, and the suggestions were pretty unanimous. Everyone said Whoa! Tyler, Tyler Spangler. Spangler. Perfect timing. George Cresswell is a very smart individual. He Agreed. wants to see me collaborate with Jordan, and I think that should happen. What do you think, Jordan? Do you want some air dried beef? Yeah, I want some air dried beef. I wonder what it's gonna take for <laughs> what is it gonna take for air dried beef to send product to us. So let's get started with the roll. We slap and bump, and I'm looking to put Chewy. All right. So the first thing we have to notice is that Chewy is starting on bottom as the much larger, but I don't know, but much larger, but larger opponent and wrestler. Interesting to see that he wants to be underneath Jordan to start off instead of trying to use his wrestling advantage. Well, I feel like it's it can also be safer, and he's gonna try to play a little bit of a bottom game. Egg of his grip before advancing. My right arm controls the hips but i'd rather have an underhook his right hand is controlling the hips and the reason he's doing this is because in nogi we can't be pushing off with the against the lapels or pulling in with the collars we need to be using underhooks so underhooks are really going to be your main option of how you can advance or stop them from advancing i always say you want to be a leech and you can see where his shoulder neck and his the inner of his right arm no space Plus, you are a bit of a leech. I am. You're welcome. Such so a nice cross. Safe and look to adjust to a better passing position. But now look, as soon as Jordan stood up, all that stuff I just said about the underhook, now he can take it anytime he wants. So I lower my level as I risk Chewy grabbing my legs and wrestling me. I get my underhook and try to knee slide to my left, but face too much resistance. There's so I switch underhook. to the side smash on the right, but wasn't able to get Chewy's right knee in front of my chest. But when Chewy's staying up like that, I like to move the head a little bit because Jordan was worried about Chewy coming into him and wrestling. That's not an option if you can get the head offline. If you can move the head to the side, you don't have to worry about any of the wrestling then. You can't shoot with your head in the dirt. One or two little clubs. I fear Chewy's overhook could give me some trouble, so again, I disengage to reset and now try to knee slide. Small thing, but when you're working at this higher level with the black belts, disengaging just because of an overhook is a really common thing. But Jordan wants to keep backing up and going in on his own terms so that Chewy has to react to him. I don't know what that's like yet. I'm only a purple belt. And his arms, and you can't go through frames, you must go around them. So I switch my hips to beat the frames. I grab Chewy on his back, but Chewy lifts me forward, which forces me to let go and post my hands on the mat, lifting people up. Very similar to me, really. We actually have very similar styles and attributes. Now, he was just talking about the size and how he might he's risking getting thrown around if he puts too much weight forward. I'm going to say it. I don't think I could throw either of these guys around if they shove too much into me. I mean, if they really overcommitted, sure, but these guys are huge. He's trying to sweep me to my right, using his elbow to direct my head there, so I keep my feet close so they're acting as posts in the direction he wants. So Chewie could go for a Sumi Gaishi towards the left, but his elbow wasn't high enough, so he just let go instead and went towards double unders. Which is not a bad transition. Now, quick look right here how Jordan's posting. He has all four points touching the mat, right? He has two hands on the mat and they're above Chewie's shoulders so Chewie can't really attack them. And he also has his feet on the mat. So this is gonna be really hard for Chewie to get any sweeper submission going unless he can elevate his legs higher and higher. But the more he does that, the more he loses his guard. Right. Explain it in slow motion. That was such a nice cross face. Boom, guillotine pass. Nice move by Jordan going for the I best pass in jiu-jitsu. I disagree, but that's fine. No, you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> now you see how he locks his arm over the head? Just like I said earlier, if you can get the head offline, you don't have to worry about the wrestling, especially when they're driving so hard into you. It's easy to shove your chest forward, start looking for the choke, hop over your shoulder, pass the guard. I think he could have got a submission here potentially with that guillotine I love to do with yeah. one hand and then the underhook on the opposite side. That's what I was one. I was just about to say that, wondering if he committed to it, if he would have actually gotten it. I try to use my forearm to push Chewie's knee down so I can step over to mount. My forearm slides off his thigh and this is what it would have looked like if it was successful. Successful. Big difference between what he showed and what Chewie's doing. The space between Chewie's elbow and Chewie's knee is basically zero. We can see that he can slide over because there's a huge gap between the two. Going with Chewie doesn't exist. Chewie also did a good transition to the sweep. You can tell Chewie's a big guy because he was able just to throw his arms up and push Jordan completely off of him. Like I can't imagine if I was rolling with him and the huge size difference he'd just be throwing me around. 
By using that deep underhook, like Jordan said, you can't even grab the overhook. Then you don't have to worry about the guillotine, anaconda, or darts as long as you can keep the arm straight. It's as soon as that arm comes in, now you're in danger of all the chokes. Hooks for taking them back or using them to get to your knees. If I stay on my knees, he'll just wrestle me down so I just stand up. They often don't work super hard to hand fight when wrestling because I really enjoy having my opponent shoot or attack in general and then countering. Now what Jordan just said about not hand fighting in wrestling is very interesting to me because even as somebody who loves for guys to come in on them so I can wrap up the guillotine, I'm hand fighting 24 seven. If I give them space and I let them have free openings, they're gonna blast double me to the point where my guillotine doesn't even matter. I get taken down every single time. So <laughs> I don't even know what it's like to fear, have a fearful guillotine. <laughs> for an arm drag on me and just make sure to keep myself centered with him. You can never let someone take an angle on you when wrestling. It is so hot. Oh, he's yeah, just killing he's more kittens. How could you do that, Jordan? How could you pull guard? All of them are dead. All of them are dead. Although I gotta say, having Chewy on top of me, I think I might, I'd rather do the wrestling part. That's a lot of weight. But this is a weird move, how he tried to go around Jordan's guard and he actually ended up in the closed guard. He's now locked himself into the closed guard where he has no options until Jordan opens up his legs. This little fist in the chin, he is barely shoving the knuckles in. He's not even going in the throat. I know guys at the gym, if they do that to me, they're going straight for the juggler and they're actually trying to tap me within my closed guard. Even with you, I think I'd rather just go for that quick sub. <laughs> Knock me out. Transition anyway. No gi standing up is such a good option to break the closed guard, especially when you're the higher weight class, you don't have to worry about the full locks. And I don't mind that Chewie has a bit of an underhook on me, because I'm making sure that he can't grab my head by blocking with my right arm. Now Jordan's making space with his legs. We can see his right leg and left leg working together that if Chewie wants to move up towards his chest to start grabbing the head, you know, hooking the guillotine or maybe just pulling it in with a bonus head control, it's going to be tough to do because the legs are constantly creating distance. I like their head placement here. Chewie stays too tight. Chewies. I'd love to get a sweep like this using my overhook, but I know it's going to be risky. That sweep that he just showed, that is going to be so hard to do against Chewie, especially how far back Chewie is and Chewie's size. That is going to be tough. That's what I was thinking. Wait off of me to make it useful. So I bring him to the other side and attempt a butterfly sweep, but Chewie disengages by standing up just like I did earlier. A really common thing in no gi is that when things don't go your way because you're not connected by the gi, you just stand up. Oh, Derek Lewis wants to stand up. What's he going to do? He's just going to stand yeah. up. Again, I sit to my guard to Boom, kitten killer. Chewie pushes oh, me my back, the and look how I pull my legs to the inside. Chewie takes those initial grips again and attempts a Toriano pass. And to retain my guard, I- I like how Jordan blocked this pass. In my opinion, it's pretty easy to stop passes on bottom depending on the intensity of the role. If you're both taking a smoother approach to jiu-jitsu, it's definitely tougher to be the guy on top. But it's easy to just stay in a tight ball and prevent passes. The triangle, and normally I'd like to grab my shin right away to control posture. This is going to be tough to triangle Chewie from this position the Derek Lewis approach. If you can't get out of a bad position, just stand up. Derek Lewis, who literally just decides I'm going to stand up now. Standing and end up falling on my back. And again, to retain my guard, making sure I keep one or both legs on the inside of Chewie's legs. You know what these two need though? They need a little bit more basalts, basalts action. We need to get basalts bent in here against either one of these guys. We got to see that high intensity roll. Uh, I don't think he would gas out even under that weather. I think yeah. he'd still be going like a tank. Try and Absolutely. take out either one of these guys. Watch how I'm patient and wait for his weight to come off to the side before seizing the opportunity. My patience oh, paid off and look how I get my underhook. But look, now that he did that, this gave Jordan again enough space. He got the underhook, he's standing up, gets behind him, lifts him, gets an easy takedown and a return to the mat. Good old butt blaster. Chewie posted, he posted with a straight arm. You could definitely hurt your elbow or shoulder doing this. And you land on the mat with their back. It's a lot easier putting your top hook rather than your bottom hook. It is easier to put the top hook in but it's always first, first hook first, second, second hook second. And when I do, I cross my feet because I like to make white belts and blue belts freak out and tell me I'm doing something wrong. Did you guys hear that? Jordan crosses his feet with back control. It's very easy to tell when somebody's going for a foot lock. So the white belts that don't love this, feel free to spam the comment section because I like the engagement. Chewie hits a beautiful escape by clearing my top arm and then controlling the wrist to prevent me from regaining upper body control. Watch how I use my right butterfly hook to keep Chewie's leg elevated so he like can't come that. up on top. I like that If he a lot. can't put his feet on the mat, then he can't stand up. And I'm really glad we can make this happen. It was a pleasure rolling with such a beast he just said time. Is it time? time? Is, Is it, it time? time? I want to be done. I'm Get tired. Get out of here. Anyways, that brings us to the end of this role. And it was actually a great video. I really appreciate Jordan letting me react to this. Uh, makes me feel good that I'm the smaller guy because I can move faster. Otherwise. You're a guy? So. <laughs>
<laughs> my guy. I, I gotta know these things. That's important to me. Thank you, Tyler, for reacting to that role. I think that's super cool that you did that. Make sure to subscribe to Tyler's YouTube channel, support him on Patreon, and if you're still here, please leave a comment or fist bump, and we'll see you guys next time.